Hear these words from Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish. I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. This is the word of the Lord. Over a week ago, as I took my morning walk, a song called Tin Roof began, began playing. I was thinking about Black History Month and ways to open my mind and our minds to new ways of understanding and empathizing with people of color. I guessed from the voice that the artist was black and the lyrics caught my attention. Maybe the streets are gold and there's a table with plenty room. Maybe we don't grow old and we got nothing to lose. Maybe in the promised land, there's a choir when you walk through. Oh, but I pray heaven is like rain on a tin roof. Maybe the sun don't set and the waters don't rise. Maybe we don't forget how to laugh like a child. Maybe in the promised land we're all made for what we do. Oh, but I pray heaven is like rain on a tin roof. Washing away, washing away my sorrows, giving me faith, giving me faith to follow a new tomorrow. They tell me in the promised land there are mountain mansions to choose. Oh, but I pray heaven is like rain on a tin roof. Images of heaven we're all familiar with. Golden streets, a table with a place for everyone. No rising or setting of the sun, the promised land. And then there's this surprising phrase, I pray heaven is like rain on a tin roof. I've not sat under a tin roof during a rainstorm, but I can imagine it sounds like a loud and constant drumming. Since I was already thinking about people of color and especially black Americans, my mind drifted to living conditions for some in the past and present who live in smaller houses some with tin roofs. Certainly in a time of drought, the rain sounding on the tin roof would be like heaven. I can imagine a family almost holding their collective breath, listening to the drops sound lightly and then eventually grow to a pounding as rain came in a downpour. Emotions like relief and hope would flood hearts and minds, worried about the future, would relax and find a place of peace. For some, even without the fear of drought, the constant drumming sound could bring peace. When I got home from my walk, I looked up the singer, Blessing Offer, a singer who came to the U.S. when he was six years old to live with his uncle and to receive treatment for glaucoma. Even with several surgeries, he lost sight in the one eye. His good eye was damaged at age 10 and he became completely blind. I couldn't find stories of his early life in Nigeria to confirm my thoughts about the rain on a tin roof, but the image and the song continued to speak to my heart in connection with the transfiguration. Peter, James, and John accompanied Jesus up the mountain after hearing news of Jesus' imminent death. As you and I might do, they think ahead to the next few weeks. They look desperately for an alternative plan, a way to stop the suffering and Christ's untimely death. They look for a safe sanctuary away from the world to save themselves from the heartache to come. No such place can be found. We glimpse it in the moment when the news reflects nothing but chaos, and then there is one story of a person's graceful act of caring for another person who has been forgotten by the world. We see it in the Secret Santa videos released each year by East Idaho News. We find it in the brief moments of our lives we call God sightings. Some find it in the sound of rain on a tin roof. These are the moments when we realize that God is present in suffering and sacrifice, just as God is present in the promise and potential of our lives. This moment of transfiguration is just a moment, just such a moment. On the one hand, the transfiguration affirms Jesus' divinity. On the other, it begins to give the disciples eyes to see God's light in the chaos to come. Death, loss, fear, waiting, resurrection, and the work of the early church 
Though we are used to living without Jesus' bodily presence, the disciples were not. This moment anticipates the challenge as the light of Christ becomes evident in ways they have not seen before. The transfiguration was a necessary event for the disciples to witness. They see Jesus more clearly for who he is. They see his glory shining through. Surely not his full glory for who could stand such a sight. But he gives them a view of himself that they had not seen and perhaps would never see again this sight of death itself. His face shone like the sun, his garments whiter than anyone could bleach, white as light. Jesus didn't really change. He was still the same Jesus, only his appearance changed. They got a better view of the reality that was always there. Also, God doesn't leave Peter, James, and John with only the bright vision. He doesn't just show them the glory of Christ without interpretation. He speaks. The voice of the Father thunders and adds to these little words to his endorsement. This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listening to Jesus is perhaps even more important than seeing him. In the days and months and years before this moment, he has preached that the kingdom is at hand. He has called people to repentance and faith. He has called people to follow him. He has spoken many things, many words in sermons and parables and sayings. The voice of the Father says, listen to him, and we do well to pay attention to all of it. Perhaps what those disciples had a hard time hearing most of all, and what sometimes we too stumble at, is the gospel itself. The very heart of Jesus' teaching, the very focus of his mission, that the Son of Man would be betrayed, arrested, tried, and convicted, that he would be made to suffer, be crucified, and that he would be buried and on the third day rise again. He told them. He spoke about it plainly. C.S. Lewis writes a final word to Jill from Aslan in the silver chair. Here on the mountain I have spoken to you clearly. I will not often do so down in Narnia. Here on the mountain the air is clear and your mind is clear. As you drop down into Narnia, the air will thicken. Take great care that it does, does not confuse your mind. And the signs which you have learned here will not look at all as you expect them to look when you meet them there. That is why it is so important to know them by heart and to pay no attention to appearance. Remember the signs and believe the signs. Nothing else matters. God prepares people in the transcendent encounters of life to endure the world below, the world of the cross, the world that has the ability to break us and yet is never beyond God's redemption. These encounters happen on mountaintops with a blinding light for some. The ongoing revival at Asbury University is certainly one of these places of glorious and gentle revealing light. That light is spreading to colleges across the nation. For most of us, they happen in the ordinary moments of our homes and our workplaces, in the grocery stores, any place where we make a space for the holy to be present. They come in the sound of rain on a tin roof. The transfiguration offers the disciples the amazing paradox that while there is nothing they can do to save themselves or Jesus from suffering, there is also no way they can shield themselves from the light of God that sheds hope in their darkest moments. The mountain was the way for God to prepare a human band of companions for the sacred journey to offer something to hold on to when they descended into the crushing world below. The moment of transfiguration is the point at which God says to the world and to each of us that there is nothing we can do to prepare for or stand in the way of joy or sorrow. We cannot build God a monument and we cannot keep God safely tucked away. We also cannot escape the light that God will shed on our path. We cannot escape God, Emmanuel, among us. God will find us in our homes and in our workplaces. He will shed light on the dark places in our lives and sit with us in the hard, hard times. We will experience God when our hearts are broken and when we discover joy. God's glory is majestic and so far beyond our capacity to receive it, and at the same time it comes in the sound of the rain on a tin roof. Amen.